Hello third graders. This will probably be my last video for you guys this year. Can you believe it? We are almost done with this school year and what a crazy year it has been, huh? So for my last video, I want to share something with you that I wish someone had told me when I was younger. So I want to make sure I do this lesson. Now I'm doing this on Zoom, so it's going to look a little different. So I have a PowerPoint that I want to do with you guys. So give me one second while I try to switch to the PowerPoint. And when I do, you won't see much of my head. You'll just see me on a small little screen. And I'll try to keep it in the same place, but I might move it around. And when I move it around, I'll let you guys know that is coming. So I am going to go ahead and switch it so you guys can see. There we go. And I'm over here in this corner now. And let's bring the PowerPoint up. All right, let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so for this lesson, all you need is a pencil and a sheet of paper. So go ahead and pause the video while you grab those two supplies. All right, so now that you have your pencil and your sheet of paper, what I want you to do is draw this on that piece of paper. Now, when you are drawing this, you're going to make all of them big enough where you can write one word in them. So on the left, you have a think bubble. In the middle, you have a heart. And then on the right, you have a hand. So go ahead and pause the video so you can draw those. And don't worry, it doesn't be perfect. Just do your best. Okay. So now we are going to talk about what these represent. So we are going to start with the think bubble. Now the think bubble is a way that artists represent the thought. Okay. So what I want you to do right now is take one of your fingers, just put it on your head like you're thinking. Okay. So then what you're going to do is you're going to write think inside of that thought bubble as a way to remind us about our thought. Next, you have the heart. The heart is the center of this line. The heart represents what? What do you think the heart represents? Yes, it does represent our fear and our emotion. So go ahead and write the word feel inside that heart. So right now we have think. And for feel, I want you to put your hand over your heart. All right? So you can do it with your right hand. i kind of make it easier. Think, feel. All right, our last one is the hand. A hand represents our actions, things that we do. So that is what you're going to write inside the hand is do. And to help you remember that, I want you to make a D with your hand, your finger, they should say. So the way you do that, you take your right hand and you can see there's a D. All right, so we are going to do all three of them. Think, feel, do. Okay, let's do that again. Think, feel, do. They kind of see that D, that thing, a good way to remind you. So let's do it a little bit faster now. Think, feel, do. Think, feel, do. One more time. Think, feel, do. Okay, so I want you to remember those three words in that order. Think, feel, do. Right? So I'm going to tell you a little short story here, and I kind of made a little animation here, and I am going to move my picture down to this corner so you can see the story a little bit better. So this is the story about Pat. So Pat is walking to class. And when Pat gets into the classroom, everybody starts laughing at Pat. So Pat runs out of the classroom. So let's go ahead and talk about what happened. Okay, so I'm going to move my picture up so you guys can kind of see me a little bit better as we are going through this. 
So let's talk about what happened to Pat. So what we know is Pat walked into the classroom, Pat walks in, the class starts laughing, and Pat leaves. So we're gonna use those three things that you already wrote down to help us figure this out, okay? The think, feel, do. So what did Pat do? Pat left the room, right? That's what Pat did. So Pat turned around and left the classroom. What did Pat feel? What might be a feeling word you can think of to describe how Pat might have felt? Hmm. I came up with embarrassed or humiliated. Okay. So we have the do, the feel, and let's do this arrow here. So we just talked about Pat left the classroom because Pat felt embarrassed or humiliated. Because Pat felt that way, Pat did this. So there's a direct line between how we feel and the things we do. Okay, Pat felt embarrassed, so Pat left the room. Think about it this way too. When you get angry at somebody, you do something out of your anger, don't you? Sometimes it can be yelling, it can be pushing, it can be punching, it can be throwing something at them, okay? So uh, there's a correlation between, there's a relationship between how we feel and what we do. Okay, now there's one more part of this, and let's not think. How do thinking affect our feelings? I'm show you. Pat might have been thinking, they're laughing at me. That's what I think a lot of us would have felt if we walked in the classroom and everybody starts laughing. I think we would have been like, oh my goodness, they're laughing at me. How embarrassing is this? We probably would have left the room too. So our thoughts lead to our feelings, which leads to our actions or what we do. Let me show you this in another way. So let's change Pat's thought. So if Pat had thought I must have missed something funny, would that change the way Pat felt? It would have. Pat might have felt curious or maybe a little left out. So what might Pat have done differently then if Pat was thinking that way? Maybe Pat might have asked, what did I miss? Oh man, what joke did I miss? Oh man, I feel left out. Can someone tell me what's going on here? Okay, let's try this. We're gonna change Pat's thought again. So this time, what if Pat walked in and everybody started laughing and Pat thought, do I have something on me? Is it something on my face? Is it my hair? Is it my shirt? Okay. So how might have Pat felt then? Maybe a little embarrassed? Like, oh no, what did I do, right? If Pat felt a little embarrassed, then maybe Pat would have done something different. So what could have Pat done if Pat had thought, do I have something on me? Feeling a little embarrassed, and then might have done, wipe would brush himself off, right? Oh, do I have something on my face? Okay. So we have the faint, the feel, and the do. Right, let's try. We're gonna do another one, but I want you guys to finish that piece of paper you have in front of you. I want you to add those arrows. Those arrows show you how this process works. You start with the think, which leads to how you feel, which leads to what you do. And that's why we do think, feel, do. Think, feel, do. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So your thought leads to your feeling and your feelings lead to your action. That is the gist of what I want you guys to understand. What we think affects how we feel and how we feel affects the things that we do. So I want to talk about another person. 
one that maybe you guys can relate to in this situation. And I just named the person Kim. So here's Kim in line with Kim's class. And the teacher goes in. And the class is still staying in the hall. And along came this person and bumps into Kim. And they keep on walking by. Okay. So let's see what are different ways Kim can react. So let's try this. Kim's first thought, which is probably like a lot of you guys are thinking this, Kelly bumped into me on purpose. So that would lead to a feeling, right? What feeling might Kim be feeling then? Anger? Yeah, maybe being mad? Definitely you can see if you have that kind of a thought, you would feel angry or mad. So then what might be something Kim would do if Kim was feeling angry about this? Go and push Kelly, yell at Kelly, push at that person that came up because how dare you do that to me? You pushed me on purpose. I'm going to get you back, right? So let's see what happens if we change Kim's thought. Let's see. We change it to, oh, they bumped me on accident. Kelly bumped me on accident. How might Kim feel at that point? Might feel nothing, right? I mean, oh, no biggie. That happens, right? Which then kind of leads to Kim doing nothing. Okay, whatever. Let it go, right? All right, we're going to do another thought Kim could have. Kim could think, Kelly doesn't like me. So what feeling might Kim have if that's the thought that is going through Kim's head? This might be some feeling. Sad? Yeah. Going to the library more. And what do you think might happen? Probably start crying, right? Or start thinking and saying and doing things because they're really sad. Okay? So you can see what Kim thought is affecting how Kim feels, which affect what Kim does. We can do another thought for Kim, right? Let's see what this one is. Kelly must be having a bad day. Hmm. So how might Kim feel if Kim's thinking that way? Yeah, maybe concerned about Kelly. Hey, I'm worried about, worried about Kelly. And then that might lead Kim to doing something like go and ask Kelly if everything's okay, right? Okay, so we're going to see all four of those thoughts together. Now, you have to remember, it's the same event. Kim got bumped into in the hallway in, while waiting in line. That happened, right? But... The one thing that changed that affect everything else is how Kim think or what Kim thought. And you can see that over here. The same event, but what Kim thinks affects how Kim feels, which affects what Kim does. But you get to think about that. If we change our thoughts, it's going to change our feelings. And we change our feelings, it changes what we do. A lot of time what we do is we respond to our feelings, but we are not aware of why we are feeling that way because of something we're thinking. And I'm going to tell you, this is not easy to do. A lot of times those thoughts come in our head so fast, we're not even aware of it. We are not. I don't want you guys to think this is an easy thing to do. Because it's not. I mean, as an adult, I am still figuring this out. One of the best ways to do it is to work backward. And that's, let me go, I'm going to go back to the back slide. Go back, okay? So you kind of have to work backwards a little bit sometimes. Why did I yell? Because I felt angry. Why did you feel angry? What were you thinking? Oh, I was thinking 
that that's not right. That's not fair. So I got angry, which made me do this. Okay? It takes a lot of work and a lot of time to do this. But I want to make sure I share this with you. So you can start working on it. And it what it helps you do, it helps you to stop and not react right away. It helps you to stop and think about why am I feeling this way because of this thought. And then you can change that thought a little bit. So I asked the question here, what changed? And we know the answer is Kim's thought, okay? So let's do those hand gestures one more time. Think, feel, do. Think, feel, do. It changes our thoughts, it changes how we feel, and our feelings change the things that we do. So our thoughts lead to our feelings, and our feelings leads to our actions. That's what I want you to know. And I wish someone had told me this a long time ago, that if I watch my thoughts, they would lead to my feelings, and I might have made some better choices, okay? I hope you all have a great summer and I look forward to seeing you next year as fourth graders. So be safe and have fun this summer.